Hey, this is Lola, and this is the series where we look at the most expensive house for sale in each state. We are in Rhode Island today, a state that is famous for being small and, uh, and not that much else. It was, you know, a handful of towns that felt a little too uppity to, to lower themselves to being part of Massachusetts. So I do have a, a confession to make before we get started here. This is not my first time going through this house. I had this wild idea, uh, you know, ne never, never take chances, kids. Stick, stick to the familiar. Uh, risks are for chumps. Anyway, I tried to go through the, the 3D tour, uh, this, this godforsaken option up here. Uh, and, and it did not work out well. The, the video just lagged too bad. It was unwatchable. The good news is for me, I don't know if this affects you. It'll be a lot easier to edit this because I already know basically what I'm going to go on a ramble about for this. Uh, to start with, we can see we are on the godforsaken ocean. You know how I feel about the ocean. I think it is horrible and boring and blue and that's it. This is a $25 million, six bed, six bath home, uh, under 5,000 square feet. So uh, a relatively high sticker price for, for this series, relatively small house for this series, but it, you know, it's a small state. Real estate is limited. You can only uh, fit so many houses in here before you are, unfortunately, in Massachusetts. This house was built in 1930, so we can expect to see some historical details. And I can already tell you, they've committed some uh, predictable atrocities on the historical details. So you've got that to look forward to. We can see we've got neoclassical columns. Those are definitely of a problematic origin. Uh, we've got hedges, very blue blood, East Coaster, uh, three car garage. And uh, at least, at least the styling is not McMansion-y. It's, I don't know, it's a normal house style. It's, is this the, my house is a Cape Cod, so I struggle to call this a Cape Cod because it's enormous. And I know what my Cape Cod looks like, which is normal. My house looks like a normal Cape Cod. This is a Cape Cod on steroids, but it is, I guess we, we do have to call it that. Lots of stairs, seemingly for no reason. That could be a ramp, but we hate the disabled little garden path down to the water so you could go swim with the sea creatures and seaweed touching your leg and bleh. here's the back of the house we got some seating back here uh an awning that from here you can't really see once we get closer up though you'll see this it's it's an awning that looks like it belongs on the side of a double wide trailer it does not look like it belongs on a $25 million house. From here, I guess it's passable. We got the, the sun's kind of bleaching it out, but uh, mm, no, that's a, that's a no on that awning. And here's the stretch of beach. I don't, I assume this is where the, the sea has already started to reclaim the state. And again, lots of monoculture grass here, a little bit of unnecessary patriotism that I find vaguely threatening. A gazebo, of course. Oh, look, it's a little fountain, and there's probably, like, koi fish or frogs or some shit in there. Great. Oh, look, we got some, uh, we got some deer statues over here. You know what? When poor people do that and they're plastic deer statues, we call it rednecky uh, yard decoration. But when rich people do it, apparently it's classy. Okay. We've got a retaining wall to keep the sea out. We'll see how long that works for them. Oh, no gate on the front. We're feeling very bold. We're feeling very confident in how wealthy this community is, uh, that the riffraff will not get in. Or perhaps we are just hoping that the riffraff will forget about Rhode Island. I don't know. Does Rhode Island have riffraff? How many people live there? I'm not sure. I think that's a grill. All right. Come on. Come on. Let's get inside. Oh, here's the back uh, sitting area. It's a little bit crowded, this sitting area. These, the way these chairs are sitting up here, I mean, I guess that's so that there's shaded seating and then, you know, sunning seating. But, it, it you know, you kind of look like you just have chairs stacked in front of chairs. Here's Here you can see the underside. 
And you know the shape of this. It is. That's that's a double wide awning. We have some nice stonework here. All right, we're inside. This is the front entryway. So here's a nice thing is I'll be able to more confidently tell you what we're looking at because I've been through this before and I'm not just going to be fumbling and making shit up. I will still make some shit up, but uh, less maybe. Anyway, we've got some historical furniture. We're seeing the woodwork. We've got some nice wood details here. Uh, not too much. You know, that's not white. That's an off white, but it doesn't really need to be that colorful because we've got so much going on with the woodwork. It's not really, you know, it's not a foyer. It's an entryway. This house is too old to have a foyer. The foyer is a modern atrocity. Uh, yet we do have a foyer table with shit upon it. Uh, and, and, you know, off center from the overhead light fixture. And we do have the beginnings of the can lights. And I can tell you the can light atrocities in this house, they, they will not cease. All right, the layout of this house is a little strange. As a Cape Cod owner, I can tell you that the basic Cape Cod has a very sensible layout, which is a basic U shape. This does not have that. It is complicated and easy to get lost. So I think maybe we're going to go through to the kitchen first. No, we're going to come to the central living room, which has a balcony around it. Uh, so nothing in this room is private. You can have spectators and eavesdroppers uh, everywhere, and your children will literally never come downstairs to speak to you. They will exclusively hang their heads over the banisters and screech, Mom! That's the only way they will ever address you while you live in this house. This woman, she's seen some things. I don't know who she is, but she's seen some things in this house. Uh, we do have some, some nice wood details up in these windows here. I hope we get a closer look at that in the photos. Uh, the fireplace is quite beautiful. I, I don't mind that they've painted it to make it stand out from the wood paneling. The room is just like slightly awkwardly large, but they've, they've addressed that instead of doing two sitting areas, which I think a lot of people would have done in this room, they've just moved this couch back. And uh, this is so uh, all the people over here will have a conversation and these people are just watching them have a conversation. This is the autist couch. Uh, that's that's where I'll be sitting. Oh, I lied. There is there is an awkward extra couch sitting back here. But uh, I don't know. That one's for putting your shoes on or something. Who can say? Uh, yeah, you can see the can lights up in the ceiling here. They are numerous and they do not stop. We've got some chuggy knife hand pillows. I think it's been a while since I called out the chuggy knife hand pillows. They just, they blend into the scenery at this point. I've looked at so many of these godforsaken houses. All right, here we could see, really see how atrocious these ceilings are. Look at this. I mean, obviously they've run the, the HVAC through it. Look, they didn't even do a good job painting this bit. There's a weird patch. The speakers, I don't know what is with the speakers that all rich people have on their ceilings. So they're going to have an intercom system or something. I think it's very awkward to have this open walkway to get from one part of the upstairs to the other because, you know, if, if your parents are having guests down here or something and you're like in your jammies as a kid and you want to, you know, go walk to the other side of the room, you got to, you know, do the jammy walk, try to crawl on the floor so they don't see you or something. Also, any conversation in here is, is a little too open to the bedroom areas. You're going to hear everything. Uh, we've got giant fruits. I don't know why the rich seem to love giant fruits so much, but uh, it's a thing. This strikes me as a sitting area that exists not because they needed a sitting area, not because they needed a sitting area here or because they thought anyone was going to use it, uh, but just because there was this awkward little indent here and they weren't sure what else to put in it. I think in a normal family home, this would probably have been appropriated for like a play area. I think that would be a fun thing to put up here. Maybe a little art studio. But no, we've put a, a weird sculpture and some pretentious looking art uh, to match the pretentious looking valence. And this old timey telephone that's, I don't know, on the bottom of the shelf for no reason. That's, that's what we've done with the space. Great. Here we have the dining room, and the dining room, I think, is quite interesting. Um, obviously, ceilings, hideous. Why does it have to happen? It really, really doesn't. Um, beyond that, though, 
uh, I like what they've done with the colors in here. I I really do. Um, they've used the wall paneling correctly. So they've got different shades of the same color. Um, and they're using the paneling. Obviously, the, the trim has been done in this nice dark color. The center panels are a lighter uh, teal. And then they've got the medium around it. That's how you correctly use wall paneling. So you can incorporate bold colors without them being overwhelming. The wall of mirrors I am not a fan of. I, I've seen other houses in these videos do a giant mirror in the dining room. All I can think is that if you're sitting opposite the mirror, you have to like make eye contact with yourself while you're eating. You in like imagine if you like spot something in your teeth or something like the urge to just sit there and like look in the mirror and pick your teeth while someone is sitting across the table from you watching you do like it's a nightmare scenario. I never want to eat in front of a mirror. I don't need to know what that looks like. Oh. Now here's something I missed in the 3D walkthrough. This is architectural diagrams of this dining room and so you could see I was gonna point these out if we had another picture of this room these wall panelings those things that were hanging from them they're actually paintings that are done in each of those wall panels which I think is a really uh it's it's a clever way to use the wall panels as like built-in artwork it's I don't know that that's exactly the thing that I would want painted in those panels but I think it's a really you know it's awkward to hang paintings in a room that has paneling like that because you either have to find something that exactly fits in the big panels the little panels you're never going to find something but you just incorporate it into the room itself that's a great idea all right here we go through this is from the dining room into the sitting room we've got a bar in between so it's accessible to either i love these archways and the wood details though the wood details through this house are just spectacular i mean you can tell that it's a historical house because they really they just don't do shit like that anymore and these archways with the paneling built into the oh that's fantastic absolutely fantastic here we go into the kitchen uh, the kitchen, I think, is probably the worst offense for the can lights in the whole house. Not just because there's so many of them, and there are. There are so many of them. But try to explain to me the placement of these. It's so, it's chaotic. There's no rhyme or reason for where they are. We've got one, we've got two, we've got, you know, this weird little arc of them. And then we've got, uh, it's just chaos so this is like a, a breakfast nook it's not very nook like but it's there oh we haven't seen uh, there are a lot of ocean atrocities in this house which is that that ocean theming so you can't see it that well um there's a mermaid here i remember there was i think seashells or something here um i think there's a seashell on the front door there's there's a lot of it and actually the the pictures have <laughs> have kind of concealed them a little bit. I wonder if they're ashamed on some level of being such ocean stands. I don't like having chairs at this kitchen island. I think that's a terrible idea. Um, the, the ergonomics of this kitchen are not great. So we've got a stove here. We've got ovens and microwave here. So you have to walk around the island with these stools and potentially people sitting there the fridge is over here there's a sink on either side it's just it's really messy there's a lot of running around you have to do in order to operate effectively in this kitchen yeah look at that this is it's crowding into the aisle so much i want to be able to move in the kitchen i don't want to be moving chairs um, they do have a gas cooktop here um, I learned recently that there was actually a lot of propaganda involved in the whole like cooking with gas. Gases, gas stoves are more fun. Professional chefs prefer gas stoves, all of that. There was actually a lot of uh, propaganda from the gas industry because they, they realized that people don't feel particularly strongly about their, their furnace or their water heater. 
uh, and, and whether or not that's gas or electric. But people use their stoves all the time, obviously. It's very visible to them, so they have a strong emotional connection to their stove and oven. And if people have a, a gas stove, they're more likely to keep the gas water heater and, and all of that. I do want to point out this is the refrigerator there. It looks like a cabinet, but it is in fact a hidden refrigerator because you can't let them know you eat. You can't let them know you eat or they might feed you to the ocean monsters. We've got another uh, really nice wood detail with this kind of seashell pattern in here. That's the only ocean atrocity I'm going to accept in here. You can see up here, so it's not that there's, just that there's so many can lights, it's that they've put them in every conceivable surface. They've put them under this cabinet. They've put them in this lowered wooden section. They've put them in the, the actual ceiling. And they put them over the, the sink here. It's, it's so chaotic. Why do you need that many? There is a TV in the kitchen. I approve of TVs in kitchens, and that one is a good placement. You could tell that was put there by someone who actually uses the stove and gets stuck here stirring a roux for 20 goddamn minutes, and they need something to keep them sane. On this side, yes, you could see there's just a single, just a single can light in this one. How does that make sense? And you can also see from here, there are already mounted ceiling lights in the ceiling. So what did they need the can lights for? And and also they're not on. So normally when you take these pictures, you turn every light in the house on so that the room is as bright as possible. So the fact that these aren't on tells me they probably don't work. So what are they up there for? Are they just covering the hole where there used to be a mounted ceiling light? This is an awkward square of I'm not sure what that even is but that's just an awkward square of wall right there all right here's some more architectural information on the kitchen we can see those wood details that they have um, that's kind of a, a running motif through the whole house which I think that's so cool to have a woodwork motif that runs through the whole house all right this is an awkward little add-on room so this is one of those little diagonal sections that's sticking off the house and let me tell you there are so many you know just dumpy little hundred hundred and fifty thousand dollar uh farmhouses out in in the midwest that have this exact same add-on and it looks trashy as hell, but now this is classy because this is a $25 million house. And the paneling is slightly nicer than in those houses, but not by much. Not by much. The wood panel, this was probably added on in the 70s. In the 70s, they loved to add wood paneled rectangles onto houses for no reason. It does have a fireplace, which is not, but <gasps> it's a TV over the fireplace! I almost forgot about this one. We've got a TV over the fireplace because we hate our electronics. We want to roast them to death. All right, we got sailboats on these pillows here. We've got a sailboat in this picture. Uh, you know, because of course we need to have ocean. Oh, and that's a, that's a model sailboat back there. We need to have ocean theming in every square inch of this house. You know, I just, I think it's tacky because having the entire house ocean themed tells me that this is your ocean house that you come to be by the ocean and then you leave when you no longer want to be by the ocean so you just you know it's it, it declares to the world that this is your second or third or fourth home and it's 25 million dollars um it's it's just a really tacky atrocious show of wealth i think Got a landline. What's with rich people and landlines? Let it go. Let it go. It's the past. All right, we've got a bedroom here with a very dramatic valence over the bed uh, that matches this, this quilt. I do like these half shutters that they have here so that you can still get the sunlight through the top. It's, you know, it doesn't completely darken the room, but you don't feel like you're on display to the world. Um, you can get changed in here and, and not worry that you're flashing the neighbors. Here we've got a bathroom with, again, can lights between 
a hanging ceiling lamp, and wall-mounted sconces. What are they for? Why did you need them? Why does this need to be as bright as a surgical theater? Why? This is a huge bathroom. You know this place never, ever gets warm. The, the wood detail in here actually seems a bit much. For it to be in a bathroom, this is like Grecian bathhouse. This is officially too much for me. Um, the, the scrolls on there. Get, no, I don't need to look at Grecian scrolls in the bathroom. I know what I'm doing in there, okay? Let's not try to class it up. Also, is this faucet a bird? Oh my god, I just noticed, I did not catch that the first time through. That faucet is a bird and the water comes out of its mouth. Jesus Christ. It's a golden bird too. Oh, oh, and there, there is definitely a golden toilet paper holder over there. So, you know, they're just a step away from getting the actual gold toilet paper to wipe their asses with. This is a little balcony off the house, and the reason it's taken at this awkward angle, and what these pictures probably won't show you that I did notice on the walkthrough, this balcony is only accessible through the bathroom, which is wild, absolutely wild, because it, it just the logistics of that, you have to really know who is coming and going from that bathroom, because... I mean, the potential to get trapped out here while someone's having a hard time in there is, I mean, just an awkward situation waiting to happen. We do have the framing on the house here. So we've talked about the Tudor Revival style, which is that dark brown framing on a white side. I'm not really sure. This looks like it was added later, this framing, and I'm not sure what that style is the white on white it's not very noticeable from afar and it doesn't look particularly nice i don't think here's another bedroom oh this is the one that has all sorts of weird little closets okay so this this room is just like chalk to the gills with these weird little cubby holes to i don't know where what's in there secrets i don't know uh, we do have a, a little couch off to the side if you feel like I don't know, being in your bedroom but only taking a nap. All right, here's another bedroom with a very bold, very bold wallpaper. A very busy, and it's, I, I got in real close on it when I was going through in the, the, the 3D view. Um, it's a hunting, it's like a pastoral hunting scene on the wallpaper that matches this pastoral hunting scene in this picture here, which matching a picture to your wallpaper that's that's a wild one percenter kind of decision first of all second of all the, that's the theme that you picked for this room is like english gentry hunting like t tell me that you wish the poor were still put in workhouses without telling me all right we've got maps on the wallpaper in here and they seem to be maps of islands so this is giving me like colonial manifest destiny monroe doctrine like colonization of the pacific islands vibes right here that's that's what this is giving me this is this is maps of all of those little island nations that you're gonna go conquer and oppress Got another secret door. Uh, we get this, I swear to God, this is the third house I've seen this exact same bird and flight statue. I think there's like a one percenter depot that they all go to and they all picked out the same statue because that's what was on sale. Or what's the reverse? What's the one percenter equivalent of a sale? Uh, someone told them it was made of an endangered tree. All right, we've got a weird little sitting room. So this is off of the li the main sitting room here. Um, I mean, it. I think it's supposed to be like a living room where you watch TV. But first of all, this TV is tiny, teeny, teeny, tiny. You're telling me you can't afford a, a bigger TV than that? Um, and, and second of all, it's just, it's very stiff. It's a very stiff, awkward room. It feels a bit more like a therapy room to me. We do have some interesting cultural art in here. I'm gonna, you know, optimistically think maybe someone in this family is from 
Um, I believe that's a geisha. I'm going to say Japan. There's also the screen here. I think there was a, another screen out in the main room. But at the same time, we got the camels. We got palm trees. We got, it's a, it's a mess. We got more palm trees over here. Um, we got Venus floating in the seashell over here. This is a pan fusion of a room. This is an awkward little, is this a mud room? It's an awkward mud room. This is a guest room, so this is on the first floor. Um, obviously, it's not meant to be lived in long term. It's a double twin. It's basically a hotel room. So this is the second house on the property. And I remember being really confused by the layout of this guest house because you had to go up some stairs to get to the living area, but they never told us what was, like you couldn't go to the downstairs in the 3D tour. Um, it is also a mess of lighthouse and model ships and ocean theming as if you couldn't look out the goddamn window and look at the goddamn ocean. Um, so there's that. It's also very, I mean, it's it's a guest house, so it's not meant to be somewhere that you live long term. I like the built-in uh, spice shelf here, and it's just a little galley kitchen. It's not meant to get you through long term. This is where it starts to get really crowded. Like, these stools at to sit at the bar are, like, backed right up against these chairs. All of this furniture is so uncomfortable looking. Um, but this is the only sitting area in the guest house. You all have to share a single footstool. Um, but that's fine because you're so close that you're practically touching anyway. They've just, it's a lot of furniture and not enough space for all of this furniture. All right, here we've got blueprints. So you could see on the main house, you walk in here, there's that central sitting room. There were the, the fancy dining room added on over here. And then this was that weird rectangle room with the fireplace. Um, that was that guest bedroom, the double twin, the awkward sitting room. I don't think we saw this bathroom. We did see the kitchen and breakfast nook. And we did see this entryway. That's the weird one with the two chairs. Is the upstairs. We saw, I think we saw three bedrooms. Uh, the the bathroom, here you can see the balcony only accessible through the master bathroom. Is the office. Um, so the servants, there are two sets of stairs in this house. You actually couldn't see that uh, in the pictures that we saw, but there's the, the main staircase next to the uh, the front door and goes up next to that little tiny couch area and then directly next to it in the kitchen below is a second smaller set of stairs which is the servant's stairs um so that's a, a relic of atrocities of the past and then those servant's stairs come up here and they go up to an attic that was really just filled with like knickknack like it was just storage it was like clothes and stuff like that so it's not really being used and it wasn't very well kept up the walls were kind of a mess laundry is on the second floor which in principle I really like having it close to the bedrooms because like that's where the clothes are coming on and off that's where the laundry needs to go and get put away um, in this house, though, like, imagine someone in your family has guests and you're trying to do laundry. You're, like, having laundry day in here. It's, or or you're the, the help because they probably, let's be honest, they probably don't do their own laundry. They probably have some poor maid who is trying to do laundry, but she can't because they're entertaining down here and she's supposed to be neither seen nor heard she's supposed to be scurrying along on the servant's stairs in the background and she has to take her friggin laundry out here on the balcony here's the guest house and you could see you come up and there's that little galley kitchen they're really not telling us what's down there maybe it's on stilts maybe it's closer to the ocean so there's just nothing down there um interesting interesting and that's all they're gonna show us so that's rhode island um 
very blue blood, very weird passion for the ocean that I don't appreciate. Um, horrific ceilings, you know, they just, they hit all of the, uh, the hallmarks. Um, there were some interesting historical details, but frankly, not anything that really jumped out to me. I think, like, these little closets, those are the, like, fun little details. I would love to know, like, what's more about what's going on with those, because those are the weird old house quirks that I find actually interesting. And for the most part, other than a few, like, nice wood detail motifs, there's not too much going on about this house other than it's just a Cape Cod on steroids. Um, well, if you are from Rhode Island and uh, have some information for me about why Massachusetts was not good enough for you, uh, or if you think you saw something that I missed, feel free to leave a comment. Otherwise, like, subscribe, and have a good one.